Welcome to What I Wish I Knew About Studying Business, presented by the Monash Business School. This is a podcast that is going to help you understand and answer all the big questions that are at the top of your mind about the transition from high school to university. My name is Bryce Lesky, and I'm here with my co-host, Alec Renahan, and we are the co-founders of Equity Mates Media. Alec, how are you going? I'm very good, Bryce. We're four episodes into this series, and I'm inspired to go back to uni. Alec and I met at uni and we look back on the time with some pretty fond memories. We uh, made a lot of friends that are still lifelong. We uh, started, attempted to start a business and we had a lot of travel opportunities. But um, look, it wasn't all smooth sailing. We obviously felt the nerves and the trepidation about making that transition from high school to university. And I'm sure it is perhaps how you are feeling today. In this podcast, What I Wish I Knew, we're going to answer all the important questions that you might have. We're going to be hearing from some current students and some students that have just left and are in their first jobs. We're going to be talking about uh, the transition programs. We're going to be talking about the gap year that you never had. And we're going to talk about the entrepreneurial opportunities available at the school. You'll hear things you might not have ever considered, things that you've thought a lot about, and also things that we wish we knew. There's plenty of opportunity to explore the world while studying. You can get credits towards your degree, build professional connections and travel through international study tours and global immersion programs. And in today's episode, we're going to chat with a former Monash Business School student who traveled the world and had the trip count towards her degree. And we're going to try and answer the question to gap year or not. So after a very long introduction, it is my pleasure <laughs> to welcome Georgie Wildor. Georgie, welcome. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, Georgie, this is going to be a really exciting episode and probably one that makes Bryce and I quite jealous as two people that didn't do a lot of travel during their university degree. Um, but before we get to that, we've been playing a game to start these episodes off. Uh, we're calling it Monash's Best Of. And we want to just uh, hear from you as a former Mo Monash student, some of the best places to go uh, on Monash, any campus, wherever you studied. So we'll kick it off. Uh, best place to get a coffee at Monash. Well, this might be a little bit controversial, but I actually didn't drink coffee during uni. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of coffee, I drank lots of the boost juices. They had this special on on Tuesdays where you got $5 boost juice and I would save my money every week and... <laughs> get a boost juice on a Tuesday. Nice. <laughs> nice. But you're a coffee drinker now. And now I've converted. Yeah. Full-time work does that to you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, best meal on campus? I was such a big fan of the sushi. That's I think it's next to the sports centre. It's really cheap, a really filling feed, which I think is what you're after when you've got a long day of classes mm, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember for me it was we had uh, me sushi. Do you yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Epic. Yeah. Really, um, anyway, well, let's not talk about too much about sushi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about the best place to study at Monash? Oh, the library. I don't. I think the library is pretty hard to beat. Um, I think they redid it midway through my degree, and even on the busiest days, you could always find a spot, find a friend. It was the best. <laughs> nice, oh. nice. Uh, which campus were you on, by I the way? I was on Caulfield for most of my degree, yeah. Yeah, nice. There's always a secret spot that you go to on campus that you think no one knows, no one knows about um, to do whatever it is, um, take a moment, keep studying. <laughs> Every time Bryce <laughs> asks this question, he makes it sound so sus. I know. <laughs> Did you have a secret spot? Oh, secret spot. Some of my friends and I... Um, yeah, we used to just really frequent the food court and the toilets there were also like the best <laughs> ones I think on campus. I used to think at least. Nice. That's yeah. a good that's a good thing to know where the best toilets are, you know. Spacious, yeah, central, yeah, yeah. You not know, too many clean. people. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one seemed to know about them. <laughs> <laughs> So, Georgie, we want to talk about uh, the international study tour that you went on. Um, but before that, uh, we want to take a step back and I guess get to know you and start with uh, your school and the transition to uni. So, uh, where did you go to school? Um, I went to school at Korowa Anglican Girls School, actually quite nearby to here, like 10 minutes away. So, um, transitioning from Korowa to here wasn't actually that much change in my commute or anything like that. <laughs> nice, staying nice. local. Yeah. yeah. So... Take us back to the moment when you finish school. We all have that period, year 11, year 12, imagining what university life might be like or what we're going to be doing when we finish school and that final bell rings and, and you're done. Can you remember that moment, how you were feeling? 
Oh, it's the most euphoric feeling. Like walking <laughs> out of your last exam, there's nothing that really tops it, I don't think. Um, I didn't do schoolies or anything. I went overseas and travelled all summer and I actually got my VCE results in Vietnam and then found out I got into uni in Japan. And so just, just absolute worldly experience. I think you leave high school and you have this newfound sense of independence and you know, such a big time of growth and self-discovery and all of that sort of stuff. And so I think it was Just, pretty exciting after that to have somewhere like you have all those emotions and all those feelings and all that excitement and then to have to channel that into uni and to be able to go in and um, just let loose there and take up all the opportunities, I think was incredible. Mm. Nice. So how how did you decide uh, Monash was the place that you wanted to go? What was the what was the decision making process like and how did you actually come to Monash? I think there was a few factors to it. I knew that I wasn't 100% sure about marketing um, and I thought by doing a double degree with arts that that would give me that breadth to really discover what I wanted to do. Um, but marketing was a bit of a non-negotiable. Um, so I was tossing up between RMIT and Monash, but they didn't offer a double degree at RMIT. So I think Monash was just the sensible best option for me. It was close to home. Um, and the, you know, Caulfield campus has such a rap for being so awesome and mm. quite new and great mm. classrooms and facilities. So I it was kind of a no brainer by the time I'd looked at all my options. Yeah. Why was marketing such a non-negotiable? I think it was the only thing I knew I actually wanted to pursue. I think the rest of it was more just a journey of discovery about what I found interesting, but marketing was the one thing that had stood out um, through VCE as something that I really enjoyed yeah. and that combined a lot of things that I love. Mm. That the whole the idea that you could add arts to marketing and you couldn't at other universities. Uh, a common theme that we're hearing in a lot of these conversations is how flexible the Monash degree is, and you can, you know, do extra things, extra units, extra, uh, d not uh, diplomas, um, just because it's something that you really want to study or you're interested in, which I think is great. Like uni should just be the time where you can let your mind wander and explore. But I guess take us back uh, to the very start of uni. That first day, you're a new Monash student, you set foot on campus. What do you remember from your first day at uni? I remember the first day of O-Week really, really clearly. Um, I'd walked in, they do lectures for your um, faculty, I guess. They must have had a lecture for doing a business degree, for instance. Um, and I sat down and in that row, I just instantly made friends with like the five people sitting next to me. Um, and they became my friends for like the first year of uni. That's like, great. Nice. Yeah. We went on all the camps together and, you know, you meet their friends who they meet in class and... Um, it was a really great experience, actually. It was really daunting to walk into your first day knowing no one, mm. but it was, it became the best thing. Mm. Um, did you get around O-Week? I, yeah, we did every single, you know, the marketing society does a party, the business society does a party. Nice. I think Monsu does a party. I did all of them. I think you have to kind of just dip your toe in everything and decide, mm. um, you know, what you enjoy most and just meet people. Mm. <laughs> so many people on campus. You'll so, definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. find the right people for you. <laughs> toga parties were big at our university. Did you have a toga party? <sighs> no, the, the, one, the one I remember was a mystery bus party. You used to get on a bus and you just stop off at places and no one knew where you were going. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. Like it was that. really, and yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. was, I remember being dressed up as a flight attendant. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember how I got there, but. <laughs> Guess that's the idea of the party. Yeah. <laughs> so Bryce asked at the, uh, in, in his introduction, we, uh, to gap or not to gap. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people listening are in year 11 or year 12 and are asking that question uh, at the moment. You uh, decided not to take a gap year, uh, but you did do some traveling. You mentioned Vietnam and Japan after school. Mm -hmm. So why did you decide uh, not to gap? I think for me, I didn't, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to, I knew I wanted to travel, but I didn't really know where. And I don't think I was ready to take that big step and go it alone. Um, I think I knew that I'd seen my older brother go through uni. I knew that he traveled, you know, that six week gap in mid semester break and the three weeks over summer, um, three months mm. over summer, I should say. So I just think that there was no, like, it didn't feel right to me at the time All my friends were going to university. Um, I thought I can go try that and take a gap year later. 
Um, but once I got into uni, I realised that you could travel with uni um, and then I didn't feel the need to take a gap year. Mm. So then when you arrived, um, I mean, you kind of had in the back of your mind that travelling at uni was something that you could do. It was honestly wasn't something that I had thought about because I did gap. You did a gap year. I didn't I take did, a gap year. You didn't gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but there's plenty of opportunity to travel at uni. I didn't get the opportunities through my uni that like you did that we're about to touch on. But you get three months summer holidays. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <it's a lot laughs> oh, yeah, total holidays. It's almost half a year, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you it's get a good a winter break as well, it's, but yeah, it's, it's almost, a lot of time to travel. Yeah, it's almost controversial that you get to the, like the end of February and you're like, oh, I kind of want to go back to uni to like have something to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you have so many holidays. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but uh, did do a gap year and then um, did have an opportunity to do uh, what's it called exchange. Exchange didn't yeah. didn't take it up though. Wish I had. Um, oh, me too. Yeah. Mm. So w when you got here, what were some of the initial uh, opportunities that Monash sort of presented or, or started getting you thinking about travelling overseas through uni? Through the arts degree, um, they have a campus where you can do, in Italy, where you can do subjects. So it's called Prato. And wow. that was always on the horizon. I thought, oh, I'll go overseas to Europe and do a trip over that six-week period and then do, a, you know, units in Prato. Um but Monash also has campuses in like Malaysia and, you know, around the world. So mm. that was always on the horizon. And then as you say, you can do semesters abroad. So you could almost, there's such a wide variety of universities that you can pick from. And that was something I really looked into for a long time. Um, but inevitably I decided that the global study program in marketing was the best fit for my degree, um, was the best timing. You could do it, you know, this intensive course three weeks over summer, um, and then still continue, you know, same progression with my degree. And in the end, that made the most sense to me. Mm. Mm. Well, you mentioned the Global Study Program. Uh, talk us through it because it sounds pretty incredible. So for anyone who is thinking of coming to Monash that hasn't heard of it before, tell, tell us about it. Well, the Glo Global Study Program in Marketing um, is a program that's a three-week unit. It's a three-week intensive unit. Um, that takes you across three continents the year I did it. So we started in Dubai, um, we went to Mumbai and in India and then over to Europe and we went to Prague, Paris and Milan. And in each city we would meet with marketing executives um, from really big companies, like we're talking Emirates and Asahi breweries, and they would talk us through their marketing strategy and what challenges are facing their industry, um, which was incredible for your own development. And then... During the rest of the time, we would actually just experience the culture. We'd go out on bike rides and make pizza and um, go to cultural centres and, you know, get this massive cultural um, understanding of each place. So it was just incredible. Like, mm. yeah, <laughs> it's sort of hard yeah. to capture in like a couple of sentences. Yeah. But yeah. I wish uh, – I told you I'd be excited by the end of this episode about going back to university. <laughs> I know, <too. laughs> I know. <laughs> Can you pinpoint one moment from that tour that was like the most memorable moment? It doesn't have to be related to the to the course material either. <laughs> oh, look, the <laughs> Making pizza or the <laughs> after. <laughs> the pizza in Milan was pretty delicious, yeah. I'll be honest. Yeah, we also made gnocchi and I oh, nice. had no idea how you could make that prior. But I think the number one moment that came to mind was when we did go, when we were in Dubai and we went to Emirates. And I think it was one of the first places we went, one of the first organisations that we visited. And they said, oh, come in here. And on this door was like... CEO boardroom. Nice. Like oh. it was like the biggest room, the best room they had. And we were getting to sit in it all day and talk to all these marketing people. And it was yeah, pretty big highlight to sit wow. there and watch all the planes go as well. It was just incredible. So I assume it was not just uh, you sitting in these boardrooms with marketing executives. <laughs> was it uh, a big group of Monash students that you were traveling with? Yeah. So there's just over 20 students who went, um, all studying some form of marketing in their degree. Um, I think there was a minimum WAM, but other than that, you just had to apply. Um, and uh, for <laughs> we'll, we'll unpack the uni jargon for people in high school still, WAM being weighted uh, average mark? Weighted average mark, yes. Still got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Georgie, one of the, the other, I guess, great parts about this is the fact that it counts towards your degree. It's not just three weeks of travel and meeting execs, so it, it actually 
does have a meaningful outcome as well. Um, did you have to do any work, or was it let's just tick a box at the end and, and I've got I've got some credit points? <laughs> that'd be that'd be a bit too kind, wouldn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we did have some assignments due prior to leaving, and then we had one big group pitch, so a group project. Um, that was due in Milan at the final um, destination that we went to. And then about a month after the program, we had one final report due. They were all really central to what we were learning. So you're kind of living and breathing it on the tour, which is kind of a surreal experience. Um, But it did also mean that you had a unit done over summer. So Mm. in my final semester of my final year, I underloaded and had this really breezy semester, which was fantastic. So Mm. um, doing summer units full stop, is just a great way to get through some of those tougher final year subjects. Mm. Despite, did anyone get too carried away and not pass the subject? (laughs) Not that I know of. (laughs) (laughs) They are meant to be the creme of the crop, the the best marketing students that Manish has to offer. Um, So everyone's pretty driven. It's it's a pretty incredible experience to be around like-minded people who are meant to be the best minds in your cohort. you know, you kind of bounce off each other and it makes you all better. Mm, mm. Yeah. So you, um, it seems like travel has been a real theme, uh, not just uh, in, you know, your uni experience, but in your life, you know, straight out of school, you were traveling, you're dressing up as a flight attendant in <laughs> O-Week. <laughs> it was meant to be. <laughs> and then uh, you, did, you did this um, uh, travel uh, for these three weeks. Were there any other travel experiences um, through uni that... Um, sort of stand out? Oh yeah, so many. (laughs) (laughs) My first year I went off to Thailand in my first mid-semester break. Um, But by my second year, I'd met some friends at uni and we decided that as many people do in their second year, Europe was the destination. Mm. And so we went for, I think we even pushed it out to like seven weeks and we missed the first week of semester. (laughs) Um, We're not encouraging that. but (laughs) I remember sitting in Prague doing my like first week lectures and thinking, I'll be back soon. It'll be okay. (laughs) So I think then uh, if we put the question that Bryce asked at the start um, to you, uh, to gap or not to gap, having decided not to and then having all this travel experience through uni, do you look back and say you wish you had a gap year or are you pretty happy with how it all worked out? Absolutely. Absolutely no regrets on that. Um, Even you know, getting to finish your degree at 20, 22, I think I was, and then getting into, you know, full-time work. I don't think there's a rush to get to full-time work, but I felt ready by that time. I had lived experience, I'd travelled the world, and I had a, two degrees. Um, so absolutely no regrets. Mm. I think um, looking back on time at uni, was fortunate enough to be able to at least get in a an international trip each year at uni, mm. and I think... Man, should I would I should have squeezed it out as much as possible because now time is freaking tight. Yeah, oh. well, and, and I think <laughs> I, I think uh, Monash obviously recognised that a lot of their students really want to travel, and they have now got a global immersion guarantee. So mm. if you're listening to this, thinking about your options, wondering, do I want to go to uni or do I want to travel? I think Monash are. Uh, leaning into that and, and saying, we're going to guarantee that if you are a student, you can go overseas. So Bryce, you, um, you've um you been desperately studying this, thinking about going back to uni so you can travel. <laughs> so why don't you tell us about it? Well, I think you've covered it off pretty well, Ren. It's uh, it's an opportunity to study in, and, and George, you mentioned it, uh, Monash has uh, campuses in countries all around the world. India have been there would highly recommend Pacific (laughs) Islands, Indonesia. I've been there, would highly recommend. Yes, Italy, been there, highly recommend. (laughs) Malaysia and China. So again, it counts towards the degree. Awesome opportunity, I think, to be able to take uh, your study and and experience another culture and really force yourself to learn more about yourself as well. And you'll definitely come back a richer person, I would imagine. So for those that are thinking about doing something like this and then questioning what impact it actually has on their future prospects or how it might look on a resume. Can you talk us through, outside of the enjoyment of experience in other culture and travel, what you felt some of the major benefits of doing something like this were? Mm, I think it did give me that confidence um, to, to go for these, you know, graduate programs, these jobs, because I had that on my resume. Before that, I sort of had, you know, hospitality work yeah. and volunteer mm-hmm. stuff. But this one, I think, really gave me that cutting edge to get the job I am today. I have no doubt that it's what got me there. Um, 
But I think also just those soft skills that I developed over the program. I mean, you're meeting with executives and that's a really daunting task, especially when you're beginning full-time work. So to have that experience is just unbeatable almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you've you've graduated Monash now and uh, what are you doing uh, for work now? So I started the graduate program with Victoria's Big Build with Rail Projects Victoria and I work on the Metro Tunnel, so the big... Kind of travel related again. <laughs> travel related, yeah. <laughs> travel related. <laughs> it's that big nine kilometre twin tunnels that are under our city um, mm. that'll have new trains running through in 2025. So wow been rotating through marketing and I did some stakeholder and now I'm working in the creative program. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So when I finished uni, I ended up in a job that I never would have thought I would be working in when I started my degree. And I imagine when you started at Monash, you never would have thought you'd be working on big infrastructure projects. Yeah. So when I left uni, I really wanted to work in not-for-profits, but I don't think I understood what that meant. And so um, I, when I came across this program, I realised it could help the community and make a more livable um, place for the future um, through this program. But it's funny because I also don't think I knew what a creative program was. Like where I'm working now, I didn't know that job existed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was only two years since I graduated uni. So mm -hmm. I think you're totally right that yeah. um, the jobs out there that you don't even know exist that you'll probably do in the future. And mm -hmm. so... So, Georgie, it um it often can look on paper too good to be true. The opportunity to travel and have it count towards your degree, and then have it count, you know help you become um, more appealing on the resume and get jobs. But I think um, through your story and through what, what Monash offers, plenty of opportunity <laughs> for uh, international travel that doesn't have to be a gap year straight out of high school. So, before we uh, jump to our final three questions, for those future students that are listening and have uh, loved listening to, to Georgie's story, you can head to monash.edu slash business slash future dash students. The link will be in the show notes. To find out more information about the Monash Business School and and uh, you can find out all the courses that are on offer uh, for, for for you. So, Ren, it's that time. Final three questions. Let's so, do it. Let's do it. So, Georgie, we've been finishing with the same final three questions. And the first one is for uh, high school students listening who are considering their options, why should they consider business? And specifically, why should they consider Monash's business school? I think the Monash Business School provides this foundation um, for university when m maybe you don't know what you want to do. I mean, as I said before, I really knew I wanted to do marketing, but I wasn't 100% sure. And I think that's a really common feeling among uni students. I don't think you can expect 18 year olds to know what they mm. want to do for their whole life. But I think by choosing business and choosing the Monash Business School, you start your first year by doing subjects across business. So marketing, accounting, economics, management, etc. Um, and then you can choose what you want to do as your major. I mean, a lot of my friends came in thinking they also wanted to do marketing and ended up doing accounting. So um, it does give you that opportunity to try everything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Uh, what's one thing you wish you knew before you started university? I think one thing I wish I knew was that your lecturers are actually like the geniuses in your field and they're people too and they're there to help you and they want to see you thrive. And so I think it's really easy to be daunted by approaching your lecturer or tutor and asking for help or asking questions. But um, the relationships that I built with especially some of my later lecturers and tutors, I think I'll have for life because they are genuinely just experts and geniuses at what they do and you have so much to learn from them. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, that's a great piece of advice. And speaking of advice, final question, if uh, you could think back to yourself in year 12, what's one piece of advice you would give her? Um, I think my piece of advice to myself would be just to say yes to everything. Monash has so many opportunities, you know, has such a great campus, has... Um, so many facilities, has great events, has clubs and societies. Just try everything, um, especially in your first year. You'll meet so many fantastic people that way. Um, and it's just such a unique experience that I don't think you'll ever have in your life again. Being at university is just 
incredible and there's so much great energy on campus. So get on campus and just say yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As as three people who are now all working full time and wishing they could go back to university. Yeah. We can. I, yeah. We'll take, <laughs> take it from can. us. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your time at uni. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it for this episode of What I Wish I Knew About Studying Business. Hopefully we have been able to answer some of the big questions that you've had and uh, shed some light on the question to gap or not. Georgie, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing your journey. I know that uh, a lot of people listening hopefully will have um, been able to clear up some of the questions that they've had. So we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks. And for more information on Monash Business School, head to monash.edu slash business slash future dash students. Link will be in the show notes. I'm Bryce and I've been joined by my university buddy, Alec. Catch you later. Sounds good.